Hello everyone and welcome to a new life. Today with uh, Natalia Griffin from uh, at uh, her hypnotherapy, her world in hypnosis. So she is joining now and we're going to be talking today about how hypnotherapy can be a fertility supportive therapy during our fertility journey, especially when we are going via ART, as IBF and IUI. So hello, Natalia. I'm going to go and invite you right now. Let me see her so she can join us. Hi, Sparkly Girl. How are you? Hi, Rocky. Hi, uh, Bouth. And hi, everyone. Hi, Natalia. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Good, good. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for being here with us and welcome. You know, this is the first time that you're going to be here with me in a life. And uh, I am really honored that you accept the invitation because your, your approach is really different. And I really uh, like and it resonates so much because I think that um, it's a tool that we all need to learn how to use uh, because uh, it's something that brings a lot of kind of ease and peace and tranquility to our journey as we go. Um, First and beforehand, I want you to introduce yourself. I want you to tell us what was the motivation that, you know, make you decide to do what you do. You know, as you know, I have five cycles of IVF and all of my journey kind of took me to where I am. And a little bit about your experience. And from there, please, you know, talk about the subject. You are a specialist on hypnotherapy. So please the world is yours and people remember you can ask questions below in the comments we try to go as as you know as much as we can but if not after the live is finished you can tag me or natalia and then we will be able to answer your questions during the day so natalia welcome again and please i give you the stage <laughs> thank, you. thank you thank you it's, it's you're one of the nicest people in the space Oh, thank you, you so really much. You really are such a genuine soul, and so I'm glad that we were able to connect. Oh, that um, means a lot to me. Thank you so much. True, I, true, I really mean it. Um, mm -hmm. So for those of you on, again, my name is Natalia Griffin. I'm a hypnotherapist and founder of Her World Hypnosis. And um, just to kind of go off what Monica said, how did I get here? Well, I didn't go to school saying I wanted to be a hypnotherapist. <laughs> <laughs> Most people that become it's hypnotherapists true. don't think that they're going to end up being a hypnotherapist. Um, so I was actually in the corporate real estate world for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. And then I was pregnant with my first son. And they offered me three weeks maternity leave. And three weeks was just a complete joke. I quit. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I had really just started to dabble in self hypnosis. And I absolutely loved it. I really had never tried meditation or anything prior to trying hypnotherapy. So it was really my first experience into mindfulness. And um, after my first private hypnotherapy session, I had such a huge breakthrough that I had been looking for. And I was in traditional therapy for 10 years on the same topic. Wow. And I had one hypnotherapy session and it completely rocked my world and changed my life so much so that I quit my job, <laughs> um, wasn't going back to commercial real estate and started to pursue hypnotherapy as a, as a career. Um, so initially I didn't have problems getting pregnant. My first son, there was no problems. Now, when we tried for my second, that's when we started to experience some issues. Um, I experienced a lot of bleeding, didn't know what was going on. Long story short, I had an undiagnosed ectopic pregnancy, which we all know can be very, very dangerous if it goes undiagnosed. And that's what had happened to me. It was nine weeks undiagnosed. And wow. um, it was, a, it was a kind of a weird thing because typically when there's an ectopic pregnancy, there's a lot of pain. And I didn't, I had some twinges of pain, but nothing enough to send me well, now looking back, I probably should have gone to the doctor, but I'm kind of one of those people where I'm like, it's fine, it's fine. Yes, um, and sometimes, sometimes that inner voice 
make us make mistakes. But you know what? I always say that if we crash from our own inner voice, it's better than when we crash from something that is external and we are still uh, doubtful about it. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I'm on the journey. And so many women are still on the journey who, who do hypnotherapy and are, you know, connected with their higher self. It's still learning to listen, right? So anyways, I kind of was like, I'm fine. And then I really was getting frustrated with the amount of bleeding and the no answers from my doctor. My OB would just want to, you know, get on birth control and it's your hormones. And I just knew it wasn't the case. And so that's when I listened and I said, I'm, I'm not taking birth control and I'm going to find another and somebody to give me answers here. And so I, I found a midwife and she, within my first exam, she says, well, you're pregnant and, and it's a topic and we need to get you into surgery ASAP. Um, yeah. So it was an emergency surgery. Um, and, you know, without going to too much, I mean, I could go on and on about the story, but really how it relates to how I ended up here as specializing in women on the journey to baby is I'm a hypnotherapist. I had subconscious support and yet I kept seeing all of these women just like me who don't have this tool. The healing journey was really tough. Um, even with subconscious support, you know, I had this tool in my back pocket. I'm a hypnotherapist and it was still really tough. Um, I didn't have something so dialed into fertility and grieving and dealing with miscarriage and dealing with the fear of trying to conceive again after an ectopic pregnancy and being said, okay, your tube is really messed up. The <laughs> chances of you getting in another ectopic pregnancy is really high. You know, IVF might be something you want to pursue. And so all of the anxiety of, of starting to think about all these things, right? And yes. so it was on my healing journey where I kind of sat up one day and I was like, these are the women to who I am to serve now. Because before yes. I was just working with um, entrepreneurs and helping them overcome imposter syndrome and confidence issues and things that are really important and still light me up. But this is something that I see as such a big lack in the fertility space is true subconscious support. And it's not going to be for everybody. That's the thing. Yeah. Um, you have to truly believe in a mind body connection. And so the women that do believe in a mind body connection, that this is who this is going to serve the women, you know, there are women out there who just don't aren't into that and that's okay and this isn't going to resonate as much but it just may open up a door to where they're curious about it too um, but that's how I ended up here in in doing the work that I do with fertility and pregnancy especially early pregnancy it is petrifying when yes you through a journey right yes um, bonding with baby and then the postpartum journey as well but um, my specialty and where I really spend 80% of my time is in fertility and um, women going through IUI and IVF. I tell you something is amazing that you say, you know, one, one of the many things that can happen to women and couples, you know, and I always mention couples either, you know, it's same sex couples or mm -hmm. uh, heterosexual couples is what you say, you know, you get pregnant, the first time naturally and never in the world you imagine that you can um, get uh, into secondary infertility mm -hmm. my case was completely different i have i had primary and secondary but when you mention ectopic pregnancies can be really really dangerous and then the rate of having another one was that did you because i'm sure that our audience want to know did you get pregnant the second time yes uh, i have a one-year-old upstairs and trying to nap right now my husband <laughs> is helping me out today Good. Um, but yeah so i so this is kind of my work too is helping women tap into their intuition mm -hmm. so when i healed from my ectopic surgery and mm -hmm. had processed through my grief and i was ready to prepare to conceive again there was still some anxiety there but i knew that going into this journey i needed to be dialed in to my higher self um and so when we first tried, I hate saying the word try because <laughs> that's an old other thing with the subconscious, how it processes the word try, but yes. we'll just, we'll, for, for the audience sake, um, when we first started to try again, um, there was a lot of anxiety, you know, one month, one went by, month two went by, 
And then I really started to realize, okay, I'm not quite ready yet. So I did some more work. And then when we were really ready and I felt it was ready to, um, I was emotionally ready to try again, I knew immediately. I mean, we tried and it was within hours. I was like, okay, I'm pregnant. I know I am. Yeah, you felt it. But th that's what freaked me out because I knew I was so dialed into my body. I had known that I ovulated from my bad side. And so I knew that I ovulated from my bad side and I knew I had got pregnant from my bad side. Now, that being said, I knew that my chances of having another ectopic over the next few days is going to be really high. Uh -huh. And so because, this, guys, this is like gives me chills when I tell this story, but because I was so dialed into myself and my own intuition, I received downloads through those first few days like, you need to tap over your tubes. Tap, like just like just like this and then harder and then shake like I was guided through those first several days because those are the downloads that I received because I was so dialed in now I know this can seem super woo woo um but when you're really dialed into yourself and your subconscious you receive messages like that can, can help you guide you along the journey whether that means okay now is if you're trying you know naturally okay now is the time to try or you see that it's if, I'm sorry to interrupt you because I don't want to let that question go for you. You see, uh, so Rocky Nunes says, on November 15, I will be having surgery to remove both fallopian tubes. Anything you suggest as far as, as emotions? I think that you asked the right person here because, you know, that's specifically the subject of how to use hypnotherapy when you have to go through. This is kind of a little difficult, I guess, for her. What? what oh, absolutely, going? yeah. I mean, when you're removing both fallopian tubes, Mm -hmm. it's so much more than a surgery. Yes. I mean, what, um, so number one, I would prepare for that surgery. I have um, a recording for preparing for um, a hypnosis for preparing for medical procedures like this, oh, um, nice. where, you know, you can visualize yourself putting on your gown. You visualize yourself under the lights. You visu visualize yourself with your doctor and all the nursing staff around you. You visualize yourself having the, um, why can't I think of it? The, uh, I want to say Novocaine, but that, uh, what am I thinking? The stuff that puts you under. Why can't I think of it? Uh, anesthesia. Anesthesia. You, you think? Yes, okay, yes, don't worry. Happen. Yes, it happens to me on <laughs> So basically, yes. you know, really kind of rehearse with your body. What That's so helpful, um, Rocky Nunes, is to, to rehearse what's going to happen. Therefore, when you go into the hospital and you see the lights and you see all the things that you already saw during the hypnosis, you've already experienced it. Your nervous system has already relaxed because you've been here before. So that is super helpful, I have found, um, is to rehearse with yourself and also um, put in some really lovely hypno affirmations, which I can explain what those are. Monica, if you can remind me in a few minutes. Yes. Um, but a beautiful hypno affirmation, and I'll, I'll walk you through this, is I am safe. I am calm. I choose to be here. And so if you are, you know, being rolled into the operating room saying those things, while you do a couple practices that I share with self-hypnosis for, for your hypno affirmations, your nervous system is going to go to a place of fight or flight to I'm exactly where I need to be. Even if the circumstances aren't ideal, I this love is where I'm supposed to be right now. Yes. And so that will help. Um, now, in addition to just a surgery, right, you're, there's so much more happening. You're losing the tubes. Right, so you're losing an ability to to have a baby naturally for like even out of a miracle, right? Yeah. Um, so now you're in this group, so I'm assuming that IVF is in the in, is in the in the forefront for you. So starting to navigate your subconscious mind on what this means for you, what does this mean for your journey, and um, helping you along the way of the grief of the tubes, right? The grief of this, what you thought would have been and moving on to what's next. I love that you say that because, you know, one of the things that I wanted to ask you, and you see, as, as people ask a question from that question, there is a lot of ramifications yes. that can come from it. And I'm sure that uh, people that is watching us, they will ask you, okay, amazing about the affirmations and all of that, but sometimes how you can um, 
differentiated between the toxic positivity and the positivity itself. Right. And you just say it, grieving, the part that you say of grieving the loss of your tubes is so important because that exactly balance that affirmations that you are suggesting with the feeling of losing something that is so sacred from, from you know, from the, the part of our body that is going to help us to get pregnant. So I love that you mentioned that and I want to remark. There are more questions coming to you as you see. <laughs> Yeah, so I want to quickly touch on the topic of tox toxic positivity because yes. I want to share something here because I think in this space, if you don't truly understand what's behind hypnotherapy, a lot of it can be misunderstood as toxic positivity, which I'm not about. Now, it really depends on your goal, right? So Rocky Nunez, what, you know, my, if we were one-on-one, -on -one, what I would have asked to you is, okay, you asked what you suggest as far as emotions. I would have bounced back to you. Well, what's your goal? What do you want? And so, you know, something that I just assumed here is, okay, you want to go into it feeling calm, right? You want to go into it feeling like you are in control of what's happening in the surgery. So that's why I suggested I am safe. I am, so, I am calm. I choose to be here. Um, but it really, the, the women that are attracted to hypnotherapy for fertility and IVF, like I said, the women that are attracted to it believe in a mind-body approach, okay? And so when you believe in a mind-body approach, you realize that what you speak, well, what you think is one thing, but what you speak out into the world is 10 times more powerful than your thoughts. And so what I might be suggesting and have on my page and things like that might seem really positive, but that's because I know without a shadow of the doubt that your words have power over your body. I have seen mind, mind bending miracles happen on a result of this. And yes. it takes time to believe, right? Cause do miracles really happen? Does the miraculous actually occur? Those are questions that I had years ago, but after pursuing this path and diving in saying, what do I got to lose? Yes. Full belief. Like the things that can happen are amazing in this universe. Yeah. And so part of what I do is help women believe, why not you? Miracles happen every day. Why not you? And so building that belief is 80% of what I do. They're building their self-worth that they can experience a miracle. Whether that, you know, and, and we're talking about IVF, right? So yeah. I have a client that after some work, we realize her limiting belief is that She's not lucky. Things always bad happen to her. Nothing ever goes her way. And so we, after digging that up in a hypnotherapy session, we said, oh my goodness, this is your baby block. So what we're going to do, and as you, as she works towards going through IVF, is when you're going through IVF, you need to believe that you're part of that X percent where this is going to work. Right. Because let's say, you know, 20, let's, I don't, I think it's different for every doctor, but let's say 25% of the time it works on the first time. Then yes, maybe, that's exactly. Yes. That okay, is then, exactly yeah. is. So then decide now to be in that 25%. If you go into it thinking I'm, I'm not worthy. I'm not the type of person where things work out for like shifting that mindset and, sh and my fundamentals and my, um, philosophy on my work is, how do I say this? Super simple. <sighs> belief. Yes. So believing. My believing. Dr. Bruce Lipton, uh, you know, I don't know if you know him, Dr. Bruce Lipton. He exactly approach and talk the, the same way that you are doing it on belief. Yes, it's about believing. It's simple. I tell you, we wake up in the morning thinking that we're going to get, it's like that, that we're going to get robbed. Trust me, we, you go out, something happened, someone is steal something from you. That's what it is. Not really when you wake up with, it happens to me, especially these days, you know, like the world is so crazy. I'm not going to lie to you. It's something that is affecting a lot my day by day because a lot of fear out there and and you know but you say it, there is little miracles that happen and that little miracles is what kind of turn on again that light of hope in in us no matter what it is so i like the fact that you say yes let's be focused on that 25 percent that it is still 
a possibility, right? Yeah. And, and, you know, of course, when we know this truth that what we think, you know, can often manifest what we're thinking, it's important to, to know that you're not doomed either, right? You're human. You can have a bad day where your frequency is lower and you think bad thoughts, but there's a really easy way to combat bad thoughts too, is if you have a negative thought, you can, in your mind or out loud, say, cancel, cancel, and say out loud three positive thoughts or th think three positive stories or visuals in your head. And so what you're doing then is you're training your, the new brain neurons in your brain to cancel out. Nope, that was a pathway that I was once thinking, but this is where I want to be thinking. And then what we know about, there's enough research out there now that shows that there's power over your thoughts um, into your body, in the mind-body approach. So if you're thinking one way, you want to think another, repeat, 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 it changes your reality. And so it, it goes to the same thing for, you know, PCOS and endometriosis. And I know that these are really sensitive topics. Um, and that's why I, I kind of preface this with this will resonate if you believe in a mind body approach. But if you don't believe you'll get better, if you truly don't like in, in that, that's beyond your conscious mind in your subconscious. Mm -hmm. And this is why the work is so important in your subconscious mind. If you truly don't believe you're going to get better, you're not going to get better. But if you truly believe miracles happen and that you will heal, it is supported. Your your life is supported to heal. And so um, that's why, you know, the work that doctors do is amazing. And we need doctors. We need Western medicine. However, it does kind of um, hamper the miraculous, right? We're diagnosed with something. And that's diagnosis is given through us, to us through a, uh, a, a superior. And that has a lot of subconscious, can give a lot of subconscious damage, um, especially in the, in the fertility space. You know, if you're, once the woman is first labeled infertile, oh. that is so damaging to the miraculous because she believes she's not going to have a baby naturally. I am so agree with you. Or oh, oh, the same, like when you, when I was 32 uh, is when I found out that, you know, I was the issue in my, in my fertility journey with my husband. And, and the doctor told me, oh, you know, like you have an issue, you need to move fast because your clock is ticking. And I'm like, what? I'm just 32. But you say it. And then that thought got into my mind, fear takes over, and I'm like rushing. And the only thing that, you know, that rush brings is more fears. You know, not only that, it's coming with more. And I wish, you know, I wish that I would have all these tools that now you are here coming into your open table and offer have had them in that time. Mm -hmm. However, you know, things happen for a reason and that's why we are here now, you and me, trying to give others that have walked that path that tools. Mm -hmm. So I see a question. I'm dealing yes. with COS and weight gain. Also, I'm missing periods for a month. My doctor suggested me medications, but I didn't. it didn't actually work. We were trying to conceive. Yeah, so that's that's tough. Um, so what I, you know, with women with PCOS and endometriosis, um, a place that I really like to start, like on private sessions, is again, this is a, I know this can be a sensitive topic, but why is PCOS and endometriosis coming to you? Why is it coming to your body in the first place? Um, and then approaching healing from that standpoint, from the root. And then also just hormone balancing. I mean, you're, when you're put into hypnosis and we, you know, we should probably back up and, and talk about what hypnosis is because there's so yes. many misconceptions on what it is. Yes. But when you're put into a, a very relaxed um, state of mind and you have visualizations that'll walk you through your entire endocrine system, it's incredibly helpful in healing. Um, I've had women who aren't getting periods that, after some work, get, begin getting their periods through just simply balancing their hormones and sending healing to the root cause. So for those of you on, um, <laughs> let me know what you think hypnotherapy is in the comments. I mean, I've, I've had some really funny comments. Yes, on what people think I would like is. to know that and think about that. But yes, because as you say, um, I, I, I truly think that it definitely the our subconscious since the moment we not since the moment we born but when we start to have awareness you see there is a child born with no fears they have no fears zero zero we born with zero fears you know we can go to a cliff and just jump 
and and you know of course this is the things that as an adult we put on our children we put a lot of fears and we grew up with with that fears and traumas from childhood and they get stuck in, in into our subconscious mm -hmm. so just the simplicity that you said some doctor or we as a woman or we as a couple go to a doctor and they say oh okay yes you are infertile or you are your clock is ticking whatever right it's getting there and it's so difficult to get it out and you just say it is about retraining that subconscious side of us for me i think if you want to know i think that 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 is what is hypnotherapy try to help our subconscious to be retrained into the normal and positive state of mind of zero fears that we born with so i don't know that's my my yeah thing. i mean <laughs> hypnotherapy hypnosis can be defined a thousand different ways yes lucia says here the truth is that i have no idea i believe it's like meditation okay good so now you well, she's, explain. she's very very close so hypnotherapy <laughs> can concisely be defined as meditation with a goal okay mm -hmm. So meditation with a goal is what hypnotherapy is. I That's defined by Grace Smith. She's my teacher and um, celebrity hypnotherapist. But I like to define hypnotherapy as simply mental reconditioning. Mental <laughs> reconditioning. And the reason why I say mental reconditioning instead of mental conditioning is because you're already conditioned because of the first seven years of your life and beyond. But the majority of your conditioning is done through zero to age seven your self-worth, your ideas about love, your ideas about family, your ideas about money, abundance, how you're going to make money. All of that is within your first seven years um, and beyond, but the majority of it is in those first seven years. Um, conditioned is what hypnosis is. So for those of you on right now and for you too, Monica, you're already hypnotized. You're hypnotized by your upbringing. You're hypnotized by culture and society. Yes. The job of a hypnotherapist is to de-hypnotize you into beliefs that really work for you and the goals and the, and the areas that you want to arrive at in your life. And so that is the work that I do. Now, I've been in the, you know, in my private practice for a while now, and it was only six years, six months ago that I decided to take it to the digital space. I was a little bit scared going into the digital space. I'm like, oh, are people going to understand this? Or is there going to be a lot of people that take this as toxic positivity? Because that's not what it is, but a lot of people understand. I had so many what ifs, what ifs, what ifs. I went for it. And within six months, my, um, my private client wait list backed out, you know, four or five months, mm. which is amazing, right? It's, it's great for me. However, what I kept seeing is just the loads of women that I'm not helping because what I'm doing is there's not a lot of hypno fertility coaches out there. There's not a lot of hypnotherapists that focus on IVF. And so that's why I created my um, digital program, which is really the next best thing to working one-on-one -on -one with me. My door is always open to work one-on-one -on -one with women, but there's is a little bit of a wait list. Um, but to uh, my digital program is my best work. And um, I'm releasing it to my wait list next week. So if you are interested, you're welcome to go to the link in my bio or just go to herworldhypnosis.com to check it out and to get on the wait list, which is completely free. And, um, and then, uh, yeah, I'll be launching it next week to the wait list. But, um, yeah, I mean, does anyone have any questions about what hypnotherapy is or how it relates to the journey? Um, one thing I wanted to make sure I mentioned here is um, needles. You know, needles is just a part of the IVF journal journey. And like, it's not comfortable to do. And there are a lot of women out there that are petrified, are really scared. So with hypnotherapy. Oh, she already signed in your wait list. Okay. I'm sorry? She say, I am already signed at the wait list. Oh, oh that's awesome. <laughs> awesome. Um, I'm so excited that you're on. I've got a lot of goodies planned for the women on the wait list. And it's just going to be nice to get to know you all a little bit deeper. Um, but yeah, I mean, the needles is a part of it. But here's the thing energetically. Energetically, there's resistance. I don't <laughs> want this needle, right? But you're doing it anyway. And so 
energetically, like what, what I work on is, is elevating frequencies all around you, your self-worth, your self-love. But then when it comes to IVF, if you're injecting something that you don't want to do, that's, it's not, um, it's not good energy. Okay. And so, and so what we do with the, um, with one of the, the recordings that I have inside my program, which is uh, fear of needles or, you know, resistance mm -hmm. to needles yeah. is reprogram your mind to one, turn down the dial on the pain, but two, welcome it. So, so take away, take away the resistance. So every time you're injecting yourself, you're sending gratitude and love to what's inside, to the process, so that you're actually awaiting and looking forward to the next time because that is an energy of love. And love is the absolute highest frequency that exists on the planet that's measured in Hertz. I think it's 220, where fear is like 48. And so no. if you think about, if you're in a, in a, in a headspace and energy of 48 Hertz, your energy vibrancy is so low Yes, your fertility frequency is not going to be as high. But if you go into each injection and each procedure and egg retrieval and um, implantation day with love with yes, gratitude, love, I'm expecting this, I'm expecting good things. I love this needle. I love the hormones inside. Everything's going great for me. Things are going my way. And then you're putting those injections inside or you're going to egg retrieval or you're doing the other things. Your fertility frequency is so much higher. And then you put in positive um, visualizations around that embryo sticking to your lining like Velcro and all of, you know, rehearsing what's going to happen. That's why hypnotherapy works and has such a high success rate for IVF is because of all of the energetics that happen with when, you, when you're adjusting your thinking. It's incredible. You say about vibrations, energy vibrations is so true. And, and, and I think that this is a, a clear example of the vibrations in general. Imagine if you can use that for your fertility or for whatever goal you want. Let's talk here about fertility. But I think that this is what is happening today with the world because it's so upside down. The vibration the, the, is of the world is on what you just said fear and that outside things also affect our fertility just you know oh yeah mm -hmm. you you can see for example when the covid hit all of that how many cycles were canceled and on, on women and people all over the world that were so devastating and and just by now you know talking to you and, and learning all of that i reaffirmed like i told you because i i did an interview three years ago to Dr. Bruce Lipton, and it's exactly the same perspective. It's the energy vibrations, love, and fear. Absolutely. And yes, I, I, I could understand that there is a lot of women and couples that have gone, you know, Natalia, through so many cycles. I went through five cycles of IVF, and there is, there is a point that when you are going through multiple cycles, you feel so defeated. And I tell you from my own experience that you say, you know, I can put all the positive thoughts, but nothing is working because it's one after another and I failed and failed and failed. But I think that eventually we must learn to, you know, to pra by practice, you know, baby steps. Easy to say, very difficult to take action upon it. That's always I say. So, you know, because it's a sensitive subject. But I think that we, through life, can learn to higher to, to manage our vibrations to be into that love that you say there is even couples you know that after so many cycles or so many attempts they decide you know what that was enough for me we are not going to try anymore and we focus on us and that is absolutely okay too because they can say okay they love we try we did our best but that's it and it's no positive, no negative. Now the love is going to be focused on themselves. And I think that that's okay. Someone is asking you also a question. Will your program help with natural conception also? Yeah. So my program is actually, it's geared for all, all. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I would say it's mostly geared for women who, ha who are labeled infertile, who want to conceive naturally. Um, my program has bonus um, bonus recordings and bonus series inside that are geared towards IVF. So when you're going through, you know, oh. IVF, IUI, natural conception, you follow the 12 week um, program. But if you're doing IVF, there's special, you know, bonus recordings that'll help and support that journey.
Um, but yeah, Monica, I think what you're saying is, I mean, that's why the women in this, in this space are labeled warriors. I mean, this is yeah. not easy. This is not easy. And I think that the whole idea behind it is that everyone's journey takes them to baby or to a, a place of where they're supposed to be and a very unique journey. And so my goal is, you know, I have a program, right? That's called um, the pathway. And so that's my membership where deciding to stop, try, okay, this is the journey you take for this. This is a recording. If you just had a miracle or a miscarriage, um, if you just got pregnant, you know, it, it's very wide in terms of what, how to support the woman on their journey for pregnancy, postpartum, everything is in the pathway. Inside the pathway is the fertility frequency, which is the program mm -hmm. that I'm talking about that um, is really for the journey to try and have a baby. Um, but yeah, I think that my goal and my mission is to make hypnotherapy mainstream for the whole motherhood journey. So yes. whether, you know, whether that's, you know, you're deciding to stop or you're going to try to do an adoption, you know, wherever you are on the journey and, and how you're going to reach baby, um, what the destiny is for you, just giving you the, 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 the mental health support along the way, wherever your journey might take you. Right now, I'm in a place where um, my fertility support is good. Like it, I'm I'm chalked up there and I'm going to be moving towards pregnancy and late pregnancy and hypnobirthing and, um, and the postpartum journey. But I really wanted to start with fertility just because it's where my heart was, you know, most seeing that this is what was needed ASAP because, you know, what was it? Two and a half years ago, I, I, two, two years ago, I had my ectopic and life threatening experience and I was like, okay, this is where I need to put my focus now. And I think that that, you see, that's the moments, that kind of difficult moments in our lives is what kind of turn on that light of, okay, this is my mission, you know, mm -hmm. uh, this is, uh, when, when I started, uh, there was no Facebook, no Instagram, didn't exist, it was 2003, 2004, so I'm an old one, that's why I say I am a veteran of that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh, you know, because of that is that I start this. And, you know, I think that the approach that you have, again, Natalia, is incredible. And I think that even moms or women that are going to reach that baby with your, uh, with your program, they probably will. I will be one to ask. You should also create one for mothers. So how we, we could listen. I'm a mom of two beautiful IBF girls. And sometimes it's very difficult to be a mom. Sometimes I feel <laughs> guilty. Sometimes I feel the worst mother in the world because maybe my little one make me lose a little bit the patient and I just, you know, maybe I raise the voice on her and then 10 minutes later I feel like shit, like the worst mm -hmm. mom in the world. And I think that that, you, you can, you know, you can make some roots because that I believe personally that I, I am a very ADD person as a mom as and everything that will help me also as you know like to to be a better mother to be a better parent so you should think about it oh absolutely <laughs> I mean it's what I need most right now I'm a mom of two as well and <laughs> I I wish my program was yeah. here because I need it <laughs> <laughs> well, um, sometimes, you know, we, we coaches and we the ones that help others, trust me, we also need somehow help to, you know, for our normal life. But I think that the work that you are doing is wonderful. And I was really happy to have you because as you say in the beginning, not, not everyone is for this, but it's so important to show other options, to show that it can work. You mentioned the word miracles, and there is miracles, absolutely. You mentioned the word grieving to, to uh, the lady that asked about her fallopian tubes. Yes, when you lose part of your body, especially when you are fighting to death to be a mom, it's a grieving, and a grieving process needs to be walk. It's five to seven steps. So to get to a place where you're going to have a better um stability or, or heal from something you need to go through the pain to get there oh, so i love that part that you say um i want to really thank you and please before we cut off 
let us know what is if you well you have instagram you know here uh, you can put in the comments please uh, natalia user id so our audience start to follow you and also remember something this instagram live is going to be up in my uh, feed i never take the the um, the instagram lives away i also gonna um, edit it very nicely to put it in my youtube channel so you're gonna have access there to make sure to if you have questions for natalia you can place them in the comments and tag her i'm sure you and when you have the time you can come and answer them uh because sometimes you know when people come and, and all of that the questions sometimes yeah. we cannot answer them mm -hmm. and please natalia a last message to our audience and one thing i hope this is not going to be the first time that we collaborate because there is so much to talk about this oh, i know i was just thinking about how we should do a um you know just focus on maybe next time what it, like how to do self-hypnosis and do a mini live yes. self or self-hypnosis together and Let's do that. You send me an email with that and we program it maybe for next, uh, uh, no, next month, maybe for the end of the month, because I am sure that is going to be a lot of uh, people in our audience that will love that and, and you know, learn that. Mm -hmm. But again, what would be like a message to our audience, to women and couples out there? It will be also great, you know what, to touch that on men. There is male factor and they don't talk too much about it. And they deal with that inside because they think that they need to be the stronger for us and they sip it. So they, yeah. they accumulate a lot. So what would be that? I mean, we could, we could, we could talk on and on. I, I could just yes. talk for another 30 minutes on male factor. Um, but I guess the leaving message is just something super simple. And, and that is, huh? Oh, she's okay. Yeah, in my um, in my message to those of you listening, wait, I think she has herself on mute. Oh, can't hear you, Monica. Can I don't know what happened. There you are. Now I can hear you. Okay, okay. darling. So, Sorry. what would be the last <laughs> message for our life today? The last message is, is that you can be the boss of your mental state. So <laughs> yes, what, whatever it is that you want to feel today, if you want to feel motivated, if you want to feel encouraged, if you want to feel cared for, if you want to feel happy, if you want to feel um, super fucking powerful, <laughs> hey, I'm saying you, it. That's you okay. can, <laughs> you can absolutely, you are the boss of that. You can feel that way. And Hypnosis and hypnotherapy is a wonderful tool to help you get there. Um, it's not magic. It's not mind control. It's not any of the things that you perhaps have heard on, you know, Hollywood, thanks to Hollywood. Um, we don't <laughs> swing, swing clocks in your, in your face, nothing like that. It's simply meditation with a goal and you can have it within you and you can access it. And um, it's my mission to try to, you know, guide the women there to be able to to take hold of their realities to create what they want. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Natalia. I really, really love our life today. I myself have learned so much. And as I mentioned before, we're going to plan not one, but probably two or three more lives because this is really something that I think can help so many out there. Thank you so much, everyone. Don't forget to follow Natalia. And also place your questions in the comments. I will publish this in my YouTube channel. It's going to stay here. So feel free to ask questions. She will answer. Thank you, Natalia, so much. A lot of love to you. Bye-bye. Okay, bye.